All right, this video is used for you to complete your advanced methods practice if you choose to practice using Google Sheets some more. So most of you have already used Google Sheets quite a bit in this class. You're familiar with it. And this is just gonna bring your ability to work with data in Google Sheets to the next level. By the way, everything that I'm gonna talk about in this video is covered in chapter four of the textbook, Hands-On Data Visualization. So if you need to revisit, or if you would like to see some instructions that are in written format, read the chapter carefully, and you're gonna be very happy to see that everything is available there for you to read. Also, there's even more information in the chapter that isn't covered by this video. So you will be able to learn even more tips and tricks for Google Sheets if you look through that. Get your money's worth by reading the book and absorbing as much knowledge as you can, right? Okay, so you're going to start by making a copy of this spreadsheet. It's called Google Sheets Practice Exercises 2, Vic 4001. As usual, you're going to go to File, Make a Copy, or File Save to your account. Save this whole thing to your account, give it a name with your name in the title of the actual project, and then you'll be ready to make changes. So let's go ahead and make a copy and change the title of it. Instead of copy of practice, I'm gonna say Laura's Google Sheets practice exercises, okay? The first exercise we're gonna do is called Smart Cleanup. And Smart Cleanup is a really nifty feature that Google Sheets has. Let me make this a little bigger. Oops, not screenshot. There we go, a little bit bigger. If you go to the data section, oh, this disappeared. There we go. If you go to the data section, there's a data cleanup option that Google Sheets provides for you. And all you have to do for this first exercise is navigate to data cleanup and then click on cleanup suggestions, okay? The very first thing that it's suggesting is to, dup is to remove a duplicate row. There are two rows here that are exactly the same and it's saying, hey, that looks like a mistake. This is indeed a mistake, so we're gonna click on remove for this one. And then here it says, oh, there's too much white space here. There's extra white space. This is also a mistake, so we can click on trim all. Okay, so now we have our cleanup automatically applied. However, even though we have cleanup applied, there's other stuff here that Google Sheets did not detect. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and make two more changes. The first is if you notice here on row six for Pakistan, the percentage is not formulated as a percentage. It's formulated as a decimal. So we need to change this into percentage format. It's really easy. You just click on this cell six, uh, C6 and then click on the percentage symbol up here that's gonna make it match all of the other percentages that we have, and it's going to be formatted correctly for us, right? The other thing that you're gonna to need to do is look for any other uh, errors here. One that stands out for me is on row 10, Russia is misspelled, it has three S's, so we need to delete one of those S's. And now, as far as I know, our data is pretty much clean. Although, or actually, there's one more thing, my bad, I almost forgot. On row four, the date format here is a different date format. It doesn't match the other ones. The other ones have the months spelled out, right? So let's actually go ahead and change this and spell this out just like the other ones so that we have the same formatting every time. Okay, so this is formatted by Google Sheets. So even if we try to change it, it's not letting us. This is where date time formats come in. So we're gonna click on the format menu, then go to number and then click on custom date and time. This is going to give us lots of different options. We can find the one that looks closest to what we want to start with. So for example, this one looks pretty close because it has their abbreviated month, right? But instead of having dashes in between, we're gonna have spaces in between. And instead of having the day first, or actually, yes, we're gonna have the day first, the month, and then the year. So the rest of this is okay. 
If you do have these in a different uh, order, for example, month before day, and you want the day to be first, you can just go ahead and, and type here until you get the uh, correct suggestion for the day that you need and add it in. Okay, but for now, this is fine. We can click on apply, and now this updates to the formatting that we actually want. Alrighty, so that's a good way to practice date time formatting. With that, your first tab is done. I'll check for those changes. If you want to make sure that I notice you made all the changes, I recommend inserting a comment. You can click on the insert comment button at the top of Google Sheets and then you can explain what you changed. Russia was misspelled, for example, and so on and so forth. Here we could say, oh, we changed the time format, the date time format. If you have those comments, it's a really good practice also for yourself when you make changes because then you can go back and say, oh yeah, I changed that and this is what it used to be and keep track of all the things that you did so that you don't forget what it was that you did to your data. Okay, so go ahead and comment that up as much as you can. Next is the find and replace exercise. So for find and replace, we're going to use a handy dandy shortcut to find something and change it. In this case, all of the names of these different towns and their populations has the word have the word town after the actual name. We don't actually need it to say town because we know that these are towns. So let's change the name of this column, for example, to town name so we know it's a town. And then let's select the entire column with the exception of the first cell. I held, I held down my command key to unselect that first one. And now we just need to hit command F or if you're on a PC, control F to bring up the find functionality. But we don't want to just find the word town. We want to find it and replace it with something else. So we're going to click on those three dots that were to the right of the input. And now we can type in the word town. And since we just want to replace it with nothing, you can go ahead and leave that space blank. It will replace it automatically with nothing. It might help to match the case as well, and everything else can stay the same. Let's click on replace all, and there we go. We have replaced all the instances of town with just empty space. We can also go ahead and go to data cleanup and then trim white space to remove that extra space that existed between the name and the word town. Once you've done both of those, you're ready to move on to the next tab. Okay, so the next tab is called transpose. Transposing data is when you change the order. Instead of certain things being the rows of the data set, you change the rows into the columns, and then the columns become the name of the rows. It's a little bit confusing, but once you do it, you'll see exactly what I mean. So we've got the different years here at the top and we've got the different meat products here. And then we have how many tons of meat were being consumed in each of these years. This is data from the US, uh, it's just sample data. And it's explained more in the textbook. So let's select all of the data and then we're going to copy it. So let's go to edit, copy, and then click in an empty space or in a new tab if you want. And then instead of just pasting, we're going to paste special. And from this list, we're going to select transposed. Now this probably makes more sense. You can see, oh, now the years, which used to be the columns, are the rows. And the types of meat, which used to be the rows, are now the names of the columns, right? You can even change this border style so that the border is now on the bottom to match the new formatting. Let's make this a little bit thicker. Right, so now it has been switched around. That's what it means to transpose the data. This can be really helpful if a particular visualization requires the data to be in a transpose format, which will happen a lot, by the way, when we start using Flourish. So take out, keep a look out for that. Okay, so next exercise is called split data. If you have data that is combined in some way, but you want there to be different columns that contain one portion or a different portion of that data, then split data is the exact function that you would want, all right? 
Let's start with splitting up these coordinate pairs. These are locations, as you can imagine, in latitude and longitude. If we wanted there to be one column for latitude and one column for longitude, we can just select this entire section, nothing else, right? Just this little piece of the data. Then we go to data and there's an option here that automatically splits two columns. So you can click on this and it's going to automatically detect that there's a comma here separating one row from the other. This is also super useful if you ever copy and paste comma separated values from the internet. Sometimes they won't automatically become columns. You can use the same option to convert it into a table that Google Sheets can recognize, right? So we have here a latitude and a longitude now. Let's go ahead and rename this latitude and longitude. There we go. So that one was easy, right? Just a simple click of the button. But what if you have something more complex, like these addresses down here? Well, to start, we do the exact same thing. We select the data we're interested in. And again, we go to data, split text to columns. So now we have the first part of the address here. Let's make this wider. But the city, the state, and the zip code are still in the same cell and there's no commas here. So let's go ahead and click on just the second row here or the second column, sorry, and click on data, split text to columns again. It automatically figured out that even though we don't have commas, it still needed to split it up at that point. So it's pretty smart. It figured out that it was the space that needed to be split from the rest. For this last one, we're going to go to data, split text to columns one more time, but this time it's not really smart enough to know what we need. So we're going to go to, instead of detect automatically, we're going to choose a custom separator and go ahead and type in a double dash there and click enter. This is going to split that up by state and by zip code. These zip codes look kind of weird. And that's because they're not the correct number of digits. And that's because in Connecticut, there are zeros in front of zip codes. The zip codes are smaller than other numbers in the other parts of the country. So in order to make those numbers appear, we have to, again, reformat. We got to go to format, number, and change this to plain text. This means that this is being detected as text now and not as a numeric value, which is good for zip codes. Now we can go ahead and either add the zeros back in, right? One way we could do that is manually. So let's try doing that manually. Not too shabby. If we wanted to do this for a lot of zip codes, we could do so uh, with a formula. Okay. So that's all you need for that exercise. Okay. Next, we're going to go to combine data. Combine data is basically the exact opposite of split data. And for, for this one, we're going to make a new column, which is going to represent our combined address. So let's go ahead and make a column called combined address. Let's make this bold and maybe a little bit bigger um, than the other ones, right? This is where our new data is going to go. And now we're going to use a handy dandy formula where we add everything together. But since we're adding text together, we need to make sure that we put something in between like a space or a comma or something of that sort. So for the first cell, we're going to do A2. And when we add pieces of text together, we're going to use the and symbol instead of the plus symbol. Let's put a comma and a space in between. Then let's add B2 after that. And another comma and a space there. And then C2 after that. And a space after that. And finally, D2. And as you can see, it will autofill the rest here. And we've got our beautiful combined addresses here. Pretty simple. Okay, so for this, you can go ahead and leave this the way it is. Oh, I'm just noticing Connecticut doesn't require two zeros in front. It only requires one zero in front. My bad. Let's go ahead and back to the split data. Let's remove that one zero. 
it's just an oversight on my part. Alrighty. So, this one already has a zero here. We don't need to worry about it. All right, and with that, you'll be done with your Google Sheets exercise. You can ignore this numbers to text one. We're gonna do that later on. And don't forget to email me if you have any questions. Once you're done with this, make sure you share. Click on the share button. Don't just share with Florida International University. Share with anyone with the link and make sure anyone with the link can at least comment so I can leave comments. But if you put edit, that's even better. Then you can copy this link, not the link up here, the link that's here in the get link portion and send that to me on Canvas. Right? And that's it.